Hello. Hey, Mate New. Hello, everyone. Hey, Lady Boop 73. Hello, 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 each and every one of you. I pray that you're having an amazing Thursday. We are approaching Friday, which is the weekend, and we're all excited about that. Hello to you from Atlanta. Greetings to you, Miss Karen, uh, and as well to Nursing 5. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I have about 30 minutes to do a brief teaching on how to build up your personal prayer life. It comes from part of, uh, part of the teachings will be from my actual prayer book called Pray That Through, which is a manual intercession, and then some of the components actually comes from to my mentorship program for intercessors. So if you can, go ahead, play, um, share the scope with all of your followers, as well as on Twitter and on Facebook. You are going to need pen, and you are going to need paper, and you can also just jot down some scriptures on tonight, because I will not be able to read through them with you on tonight, because I do have to get some rest. If this is your first time following me on Periscope, my name is Prophetess Keisha L. Cephas. I am the author of Pray That Through, and that is the manual on intercession. It is on Amazon.com through the Kindle edition. Also, I am the creator of the Goodbye 7 Day Challenge, the one that allows me to deal with the soul of an intercessor, the soul of those who are in Christ. I have two phases, and that is uh, phase one and phase two, which you can find both of the phases at KeishaLCFest.com, which is my website. If you still want to just challenge yourself for 14 days by getting the two challenges, you can do so. It deals with jealousy, intimidation, fear, compassion, Comparison, competition. Um, it talks about conflict because of unresolved issues or desires within your own heart. Um, and so you can go ahead and go to KeishaLCephus.com and get the two challenges if you want. That's phase one and phase two. Let's get started. Let's talk about building up your prayer life. If you are ready, go ahead. And give me some hands up to those of you who are going to come in later on. You can always go back to the replay. God bless each and every one of you. I'll try to do a recap if I can. If not, then you can catch the replay. Amen. All right. So what is prayer? What is prayer? So we know that prayer is dialogue between God and his covenant partners or his people, which we are. It is basic Christianity is a way that we commune with the father the same way Adam and Eve communicated with God in the Garden of Eve, uh, Eden. And so you want to make sure that you understand that it's dialogue between two people. It is not a one way conversation. It is a two way conversation. It is you speaking to God is also you partner up with another partner in Christ and then you both direct your prayers unto God but it is a two-way conversation he is a God that communicates back unto his people he has an opinion about everything that we face in this life he has an answer and everything that we face is in the Bible so he has biblical principles so you want to make sure that you are a person when you are communicating with God that you are a person that understands the Bible you are a person that is reading the Bible that you are a person that meditates on scripture, that you're somebody who actually studies the scripture um, because he only answered by way of his word. And so you want to go ahead and write down it is two way communication. It is dialogue between you and the father. Those of us who are in covenant with him, he is not a deaf God. He's not a dumb God. He's not a mute God. He's not a God that's been created by man's hand. He is our creator and we are his creation and he yearns for us to commune with him and so you want to write down it is two-way communication two-way communication got it all right let's move on uh, we must understand that it's extremely important that we invite God into everything we face. We want to make sure that we have a daily devotion and we want to make sure that we learn how to worship God in spirit and in truth. We want to make sure that we are people who know how to study the Bible. We want to make sure that we are a people that knows how to bow our heart means bend it, bow it. In regards to I reverence you, I respect you, and I come in agreement with you. So you want to learn how to bow your heart. 
Even if it's broken, you still want to bow it because he can amend it. You also want to go ahead and study the book of Genesis, starting in Genesis 1. This is where you begin to learn about his person, his characteristic traits, his temperance. You begin to learn about his person, his movement, his structure. And you begin to see him as God high and lifted up. The sovereign one, the holy one, the faithful one. But you want to learn about his person. So when you are faced with anything in life or you just want to worship him, you'll know exactly who you're worshiping and who you're inviting into your space. When you come into his presence, there is the fullness of joy. So he begins to demonstrate himself as joy in the presence of God. He begins to demonstrate himself as strength in his presence. He begins to demonstrate himself as the God who answers. He begins to demonstrate himself as the God who says, let there be light. So even in the midst of dark seasons of your life, he brings about light. And he's the God that comes in and fill every void in your life because what he moves upon the deep, he moves upon the void and he fills it with himself. And so you want to know him as the God that fills every void that keeps you from being like me who did not know God, who smoked marijuana, who drank and was in beds of lovers, uh, who could not meet those void, who could not fill those void. Marijuana couldn't do it. Smoking, uh, smoking cigarettes and, and doing all manners of things and the beds of others could not fill those voids because he is the actual lover of my soul and because I was pursuing other loves I was never fulfilled so you want to know him as the God who can fill any void that you may face whether if you feel like you're fatherless motherless, abandoned rejected, he is God and he can fill those voids within your heart in the secret place so when you start building up this prayer life you're not looking unto people you're looking unto him, he'll start giving you answers to questions he become a solutionist to you because he has a solution to every problem when you go into that place sometimes there's times when you you don't have to say anything he is the one who actually begins the conversation with you and he begins to talk to you about your destiny he begins to talk to you about your purpose he begins to talk to you about your future he begins to deal with every soul issue he brings you into a measure of awareness that you need him and then you come into his love because because he begins to express his goodness over you. This is the kind of God that you love to be in his presence. You yearn to be in his presence. You desire to be in his presence. And even when you're facing problems, you don't run from him. You run to him. Like Adam and Eve, when they sinned against him in the garden, they what did they do? Because sin makes you want to what? Run from God. Hide yourself from God. And God has to come back and find you and say, where are you? But when you get to know his goodness and know that he's sovereign, and he's merciful and that he's always moved to compassion you won't run from him you'll run to him why because he is a redeemer and he will redeem anything that belongs to him and he is God and he is a loving God he's a kind God he's a God that will, will, will forgive us the moment that we ask God forgive me of this and he will not remember that sin no more he's a God the moment that we repent he says I threw it into the lake of forgiveness the only person that needs to forgive themselves in that moment is you. He'll start talking to you about forgiving even yourself and forgiving others in this place. This is why you need to study the book of Genesis because at the beginning you will begin to learn who God is at the beginning so that way you're not trying to discover who he actually is every time you're going into prayer but every day he reveals a part of his person to you. Every day he reveals a part of his temperament to you. Every day he reveals a part of you that does not even look like him every day he is so loving he is so kind every day he breathes into your nostril is a time that you can say God I didn't get it right I see you Vicky I love you God I didn't get it right but thank you for waking me up this morning giving me another chance to serve you another chance to get it right with you another chance to commune with you another chance to be in your presence another chance to represent you well another chance to even respond well even in seasons of the unknown thank you God for breathing once again into my nostrils giving me life and giving me understanding that hey you're giving me another chance to fulfill my assignment in the earth you only you can do that God because surely you could have took this breath away and I can be buried six feet under but you God so merciful so kind
God has given me another chance to even get it right with you. Thank you, God, for being that loving, so kind when others won't forgive me as quick as you will, but you are. You are God. So this is the place where you begin to learn about him and learn about yourself. You go into this secret place according to Matthew 6 and you begin to learn to silence the traffic in your head and quiet your soul. You go in there and you don't have to do any role play. You don't have to become some different character. You become you naked and unashamed. Why? Because he knows every detail about your life and you go into that place and sometimes you sit quietly so you can hear him and you be like, God, what is it that you have to say? He might bring up a scripture. He might give you a vision. For those of us who see, you might start here and the Holy Spirit began to speak to you by way of scripture or a word or a phrase. You might hear a line in a song. It, it, at that moment, you may hear him speak to you audible. Some, some of us heard him speak to us audibly. Not me, but some. Some say, I don't know, but you can begin to hear him and he begins to speak sometimes as intercessors. Sometimes a, a th those of us who do have a prayer life, we go in with our list and we never give him a chance to speak. So to me, I think we talk too much. There are times when you need to just sit still, quiet yourself and begin to allow him to speak versus you going in with this long list to pray for your family, to pray for your finance, to pray for your career. Let's pray for Ricky. Let's pray for Poo Poo. Let's pray for my auntie. Let me hear my grandmama. God, I need this. God, I need you to do this. When he's saying, I just need you to seek my face. If you seek my face, you'll have my hand. So you have to become, that's right, a skilled listener. You have to teach yourself how to hear the voice of God. There are times when you're not going to go in and you're not going to say nothing. How can you hear his plan or his purpose? The one who says, the thoughts and plans that I have for you are good and not of evil to give you an expected end. But if you never hear him, how do you know his plan? How how do you know what your purpose look like? How can you join with him and partner up with him, even in prophetic intercession, which I'll talk in another day, how to join with him and hear everything he has to say so you can pray it through. You have to learn how to quiet yourself. You can't be too talkative. Did you not know if you talk too much, you have a demon? That is a demon when you begin to talk too much because what you're saying is that I'm vying for attention. You are an attention seeker. There are times when you got to go in prayer and get quiet. You got to get low. You got to bend your heart and you got to begin to hear what the spirit of the Lord has to say unto you in that moment. Then you can go in and start with directives or start with your list. Why? At the end of the day he still know your needs before you can even think of it how much would he do for you than what he did for the lilies that sit in the field and they don't even have to toy here it is you are his created one how much more will he do for you? So do you really need a long list to go into prayer when he already knows what you need? What you're doing is giving voice to it, giving language to it, but you still need to keep yourself quiet at times when you begin to hear exactly what he has to say about your situation, about your circumstance, about your person, about your character, about your integrity, about your assignment, about your message, about your career. All of those things can be found in a personal prayer life in your secret place it's the secluded place it's the place where you close off everything some people think they actually have to get inside of a closet i haven't tried that one yet but i do know how to quiet myself in the secret place the place that i set aside the space that i set aside to hear from god to talk to god to commune with god i talk to people ask well how many times a day do you pray i pray all day it says never to cease from praying neither shall you give up for if you do you will lose hope so you don't you don't cease from praying how do i pray all day i meditate on scripture or every time I'm faced with a situation or a circumstance, the moment I invite God into it, sometimes it can be five minutes, sometimes it can be 15 minutes, sometimes it can be an hour, but I never cease from opening up my mouth to talk to God. I also pray by way of praise and worship or giving thanksgiving unto the Lord or through supplication and petition. I'm forever giving language in that moment to prayer. Why? I never miss a beat in regards to saying, God, I thank you. God, I love you. God, I need you.
you. God, I worship you. And God, even when I don't understand, I still trust in you. With all of my heart, I lean not to my own understanding, but I acknowledge you in all of my ways that you may direct my path. You are God. You know what's best for me better than I can know for myself. I trust you on this journey. I go on a journey with you. Let me experience an encounter with you, whether if I'm driving in my car daily, you load me with benefits. So let me be able to see even in your creation, how you're loading me with benefits. Thank you for causing my eyes to be open that I may see in the spirit. Thank you for causing my ears to be open that I may hear in the spirit. Thank you, God, for causing my heart to be open that I may receive from you. God, thank you for even causing me to discern and to be keen in the spirit that I don't miss a moment with you and that I don't give a place to the enemy to invite him into my life and even when he's functioning and trying to have an opportunity to cause me to break and bend and cause me to be destroyed thank you God that you bring that unto me and you reveal it Father that you may deal with it that I may lift up my hands and tell you that I can't do nothing without you but in you I can do all things thank you God for being a God that delivers me a God that heals me a God that cuts me and prunes me a God that sharpens me a God that realigns me a God that brings a adjustment into my life. Thank you for a God that, that whose love who never fails me, a love that never disappoints me, a love that never brings me to shame. Thank you that I can always lift up your name even in the midst of persecution. You still causes me to rejoice and have rewards. See, you can always find an opportunity to what? Pray unto God. But one way that the only way that you're going to have a vocabulary and a strong prayer life is that you got to know who he is. Number one and you and the only way to know him is to know his word. You cannot pray outside of the word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word, God, you promise will forever stand. It will forever stand. It will forever stand, meaning that I can bank on it, God. It will forever stand. Your word, your yes over my life will remain forever. So even when I face any trial, any tribulation, any conflict, any issue, whatever the case may be, God, I know that this thing is only temporary and it didn't come to kill me. It didn't come to destroy me, but it come to make me strong and cause me to have patience and cause me to have faith and to gain wisdom. So God, I choose to focus on what I'm going to gain from this moment, which is wisdom and not that which is bringing me pain in the moment. Yes, I may cry, but my tears are bottled up as prayers unto you and you still will bring me joy. Even when I weep before you, God, I bow before you. I love you. I know who you are to me. You are my king. You are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end you rule with the scepter of prayer you are god of justice and righteousness sovereign god you are i love you father and you just begin to build from there but you have to know who he is you have to know who he is to you and though you don't see him you see him because every day that you look in the mirror you are a reflection of his creation you are exactly his representative in the earth and even when you feel like you in a backslidden state he's so powerful he said I'm married to the backslider I am covenant with them and that gives you another opportunity to draw back and he pulls you and he puts you on the path of life and the path of righteousness even when the enemy want to destroy you our God is so great that the enemy will come and try to condemn you of everything that you have done in your past even in your present and tell you that you can't even make it into your future but God is so powerful he don't even condemn you he just wants you to have a sense of conviction that moves you into repentance a God that says hey have a change of heart have a change of mind see it from my perspective that's how powerful he is but you won't know it if you don't ever get into the secret place. You won't know who he is as a father unto you. I don't care if your father was a good father or a bad father or a father that was there sometimes and a father that wasn't there. This God is not human. He is not like our natural parents. He is loving and his love never fails. He's not a God that holds grudges. He's not a God that would cause us to fall into ditches and never get us out. He is that type of God. He's that God that restores all things back unto us. A God of 
restoration, a God of reconciliation, but you have to know him for yourself. You can't keep running to people when God is wanting you to run to him. How dare you love the creation more than you love the creator when he's the creator of all creation. I don't care if it's your job. I don't care if it's your mama, your daddy. I don't care if it's your education or your money. Those have become idols to him. If you have not put him first, he must be Lord in every area of your life. Lord in your money, Lord in your marriage, Lord in your in your career, in your education, in ministry. I don't care if you even trying to mentor someone, disciple someone. If you haven't made him Lord, you need to let go until you make him Lord. Don't preach a gospel that you're disconnected from. Don't even try to pray to a God that you do not know. He don't want you to drop his name. You just a name dropper. You really don't have a relationship with him. You are not in communion with him. You don't study his word. You don't meditate on his word. You don't sit in his presence, but yet you want to to drop his word no not this type of God we are not gods that want to drop his name when we think it benefits us no I can call on his name day and night he is my strong tower he is my refuge he is the God that demonstrates his power even in my weakness how do I know because I know him I've been in his presence I've been there when it was good I've been there when it was bad I've been there when I was strong and I've been there when I was weak I've been there when I knew and I've been there when I did not know but I know him he is is my source and he owns all resources. I call him the supply. He the one that carries all my supplies. He is God. He is the one that causes me to come from a tormented state. The God that delivered me from depression. The God that delivers me from suicide. The God who told me though your father naturally rejected you, I accepted you as my beloved. He is God that brought me back from a dead place to a living state. I know this God so I don't drop his name for the sake to drop it so I can get some recognition. I drop his name because I know him. I love him and he knows me. My sheep knows my voice, but a stranger, they will not follow. I know him and he's so powerful that he says, and as a shepherd, I know my sheep. That's how powerful he is. But you wouldn't know that if you don't get into that secret place. You start there. You don't get behind no pulpit. You don't start teaching. You don't go on no journey until you go on one with the father. You don't pursue anything thing outside of him because it won't work. It will fail. It will be like you building your house upon the sand. And when the wind and the fire and the and the fire and the storms blow, your house will come crumbling down. So no matter what comes my way, because I know I am built upon the rock, revelation, the revealed knowledge. I know that no matter what comes my way, it can be the fire, it can be the wind, and it can be the storm. I know that I'll still be able to stand because my life is built upon Jesus Christ. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. I can't do nothing without him. He is God, and I love him with my whole heart, with my whole so and even when I'm not looking at like him in moments and in times and when I don't sound like him I remember to get back into that place and say God help me I need your help in this I can't see right I can't think right I don't feel right I need you to deal with my soul put your finger on everything that does not look like you God bring it to surface and deliver me because who are you you are my deliverer the moment that whatever I need in that moment you have become it and everything that I'm not in the secret place you become that place of exchange for me. So everything that I'm not, I become that because I'm in the place with you. So you take that from me and you give me more of your person. And the more that I'm in the secret place, the more that I learn of you. The more that I read your word, the more I learn of you. The more that I begin to study and see things from your perspective, the more the scales come off my eyes. This is the kind of God that you want to serve. You got to know him. You have to know him. You don't want to draw from him. You want to draw to him. You get to know him in the secret place. How dare we not go into prayer for long lengths of time, for days, for days, for days, for weeks and say, I don't know what to say to him. Be quiet and let him start talking. He'll give you language. I don't know what to say to him. Get in your word and get you some language. I don't know what to say to him. Quiet your soul and not stop letting the devil tell you that you don't have anything to say. He, he desires for you to be in that secret place with him. You do have something to say. You are a child of God. Tell him what's on your heart. 
I didn't know anything in 2000, but two scriptures and my marriage was on the line. And I said, God, I don't know you like everybody else may know you, but I do know this. I need help. I need help. I need help. I need help. I still want my marriage. I still love my husband. I don't know nothing but two scriptures, but my mama told me if I begin to tell you exactly what's going on with me, you will begin to speak with me. I have that kind of faith, God, that you're going to talk to me in regards to my life, in regards to my husband, in regards to my spouse. And surely when I thought that I was going to go in there and complain about my husband, I quiet my soul. I quiet the traffic in my head. I begin to bow my heart in this place. And I said, God, what is it that you want from me? What is it that I need to do? And he said, you coming in here to talk to me about what he's doing to you. But let me tell you how I say what you're doing to me. You have placed this man as an idol and you didn't know it, but you're going to know it today. He had became an idol to you. He became first in your life. You put him first in everything, but today you're going to renounce him, denounce him. He is your husband, but I am the creator of that husband. You're going to put me first, put me first, put me first. If you put me first, I'll restore it. If you put me first, I'll reconcile it. If you put me first, I'll bless it, but you got to put me first and don't come in here talking to me what he talking to me about what he has done to you. I want me, I want to talk to you how I'm going to restructure you, how I'm going to realign you, how I'm going to bring some correction because you're Jezebelic, you're very controlling, you're rebellious, you're full of pride. You stubborn. You always got to get the last word. So I'm going to bring some alignment in your life. And if you allow me to realign you, I'll bring this thing back together. And the moment that I submitted and went back and he said, now go tell him, your husband, that I come first. Even if he leave, you still going to make me first because I'm a God that never leaves nor forsaken. Even if he wants to leave, I'm still going to be first. Go and tell him that I'm first. That's the kind of transactions you get in a place with God. He's not going to always talk about blessings. I'm going to get you a car. I'm going to get you a house. I'm going to get you some money. No, he's going to start talking about your person. He's going to start dealing with your nature and your character and how you're out of alignment. He's going to start talking about you before he start talking about the people that you call enemies who are motivated by hell, by hell's agenda. He's going to even start telling you how to even pray for them. That's the kind of God he is. Pray for your enemies. Even pray for those who persecute you. Isn't that crazy you like what, 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 what wait wait a minute why because he's teaching you his person he's teaching you his nature he's teaching you his character because if you only can love those that love you then you don't look like god you got to be able to love those who even hate you despise you lie on you that's the kind of God we serve. But you only learn that in a secret place. You only learn that in a secret place. That's how I know a lot of people haven't been in a secret place. If we some people that always hold on to grudges, alts, and ill feelings, and unforgiveness, you haven't been there. Because guess what God going to start talking to you about when you do get in there? About you? What part did you play? Or what are you to learn from this? Because he's a teacher. The Holy Ghost is a teacher. He's going to always give you teaching moments. How do you build up your prayer life? Getting your butt into that word getting yourself into a place where you allow him to take sole control over your entire life submitting yourself under his authority how do you build it up with the word some people think that you can pray without this this powerful tool you need the word of god he only answered his word he is the word his he, he places the word above himself how dare we think that we can pray without even knowing scripture you must know scripture get you some index cards and begin to write you some scriptures now if you got a topic that you believe in God for, you get that topic and you start writing those scriptures down on some index card and you start doing what I call memory scriptures. You write them down and you rehearse them and you meditate and you ponder and you meditate and you ponder and you meditate and you regurgitate. You put it in and you bring it back out. That's the word. You put him back in remembrance of his word. Do he need to be Reminded of what his word says? No. And the reason why he tells you to put it, put him back in remembrance because he's reminding you who he is and what he said and what he's doing and what he has done and what he's going to do. He is, he is, he what? What is he? He's God all by himself. He's God all by himself. He's reminding you. But if you don't know the word, you can't be reminded, now can you? So you got to study scripture. Write that down. Prayer is two-way communication. To bow is to bend your heart. You got to study. You have to meditate. 
If you don't have no word, you don't have no power. So the devil is going to run circles around you. Circles. You're going to feel tormented all the time. The devil used to tell me, run your car into this wall. Drive your car off the bridge. Things are really, really bad. Really bad. I used to smoke so much weed. I don't even know if I, only God can really give me this memory because that's how much weed I smoked. Yeah. But when you get in his presence, I promise you, you don't look like your past. A lot of people wouldn't even believe that I was a drug dealer, a drug user, a gang banger, a whoremonger. Why? Because in his presence, he shifts. He changes the very essence of your being. You begin to look like him. When people come in your contact, they say there's something about you. And that something is him, his glory. Why? Because we are his glory carriers. And when you begin to speak, they say there's something about you. What it is, is him that is speaking through you. There's something about you. They start to get attracted by, attracted to your anointing. Why? It's the anointing that lifts burdens and destroys yokes off of people people lives but you won't have it if you don't know him and a lot of us are trying to operate outside of him and it's not going to work you need a relationship with him he's relational how can you have a relationship with his creation and don't have one with him he desires for us to be in his presence from genesis to revelation from genesis to revelation he is god He's God, the creator of heaven and earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, the wind, the fire. He's God, the one who breathes his very spirit into our very being. Every day that I lay down, he instructs me upon my bed. Why? Because I'm in a relationship with him. He won't leave me visionless. He's God. Because vision is based off of revelation. So he won't allow me to run wild. Because why? I'm built upon the rock, the God who gives me vision. Those who don't have vision, they perish. They run wild. They become wild animals. They can't be sustained. Why? Because they don't have a relationship. Only those without a vision is running wild. You will never catch me acting like a wild donkey in the streets. Why? Because I have a relationship with the Father. I love him with all of me, my whole being. And even if I miss the mark, I know I can still come back into his presence and know that I can get it right with him. And even when I miss it, he only revealing what was still not dead within my flesh. Because no good thing dwells in the flesh. So when he brings it up i comply thank you god for revealing me i'm not gonna get in the dumps or be in the slumps and cause my countenance to be like woe is me no thank you for revealing a part of me that doesn't look like you and that you're bringing about a measure of deliverance and a measure of healing into my life and realign me so i can look more like you if i miss it i missed it but i know how to repent and i know how to say forgive me and when i repent i'm not going back to it because I want to look like him. But you won't do it if you don't have a relationship. So get you some scriptures. Get you some index cards. I can't. I hate to see people try to pray without scriptures. That's not because I'm gonna. That's not in the Bible. I, don't, I haven't read it yet. Now I, I don't claim to know everything. I'm not a theologian, but I do know his word. I know and you praying. You stand up there before God's people in them corporate settings and you just be praying all stuff. Mm -mm. That's not, mm -mm. he's not going to answer that. That's not his word. No, you have to pray the word and you got to track it. I know God. I have a track record with him. The moment he answered my prayer about my husband, I've been tracking it ever since. I feel like I can get any prayer through. As long as it's lining up with his will, this is the confidence that I have in him. That whatsoever I ask according to his will, according to his word, according to his way, I know that he will answer me. He will answer me. He hears the cries of the righteous. And he delivers them from all of their troubles and that which distresses them. I know he hears me. The moment I open up my mouth, he hears me and I know he has already answered me. Yes, he did. I don't care what the Prince of Persia is doing in the second heavens. I know God is going to manifest himself to me. So I wait patiently for him. That's what faith is all about. 
I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. I walk by faith. I walk by faith. I tell myself every day, it's by faith. It's by faith. And even when it don't look like it, Keisha, it's still faith. Even when it sounds like he, if it looks like he's not moving, he's still moving. He's still moving and he's moving on your behalf, Keisha. I don't care what has come up against you. I don't care what your emotions is trying to tell you because your emotions are fickle. They up and down. I say get you some stability and start quoting scriptures to yourself. Keisha, what did God promise you? All of his promises towards you is yes and amen, but you won't know it. If you don't have a relationship with them. So you need some faith. You need some faith. You want to speak to mountains? You want to speak to mountains? The only way you can speak to mountains, which are only obstacles, and tell them to be cast into the sea is by faith. And you can't hold no grudges. That's Mark 11. You can't have no grudges. You can't have no ill feelings. So your heart has to be right. Not just towards God, but towards his creation, his people. It has to be even right towards your assignment. You want to speak to mountains? If you still got mountains and obstacles that have not moved, check check out what you've been doing with that heart, baby. Ask God to reveal that heart. Your heart has to be right before God. You can't, and then you can't manipulate him in the personal prayer. Mm-mm. He's not just answering everything. Like you want Sally's husband or you want David's wife. He's uh-uh. You saw how he sent Nathan to David to deal with him about Uriah. God ain't playing. You thought you got, you had a friend, didn't you? No, 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 no. You can't just ask him any old thing. God calls me to prosper. Let me get, you know, I want $50,000 and then you backslid. Mm-mm. No, then you start serving mammon and you forget about God. Mm-mm, mm-mm. See, he know what's in the heart. So you start, got to start asking him, reveal my heart. What's in this heart? Reveal what's in my heart. Everything that's not like you, God, reveal it. That should be your daily prayer. Reveal what's in my heart. Reveal every lie that I bought into because I need truth. It's the truth that sets a man free. Reveal where there's some scale, where I'm blind, take them off, God. Let me see. I got to see myself the way you see me. But hey, reveal my heart. What's in there? What's buried so deep in those compartments that I refuse to face? I'm telling you, there's something in there. So you have to ask him, reveal layers of my heart reveal it what's in there God because guess what see man look on the outer appearance but you God you deal with that heart you deal with us from the inside out man be looking from the outside in but you deal with us from the inside out so God what's in there I was looking at listed or love it on home and gardening it says hey they was trying to do some renovation hey this place is molded underneath the surface is molded it's corroded it's a water leak see that's that stuff that people don't see on the outside see the frame was looking amazing people can buy into it because on the outside it looked amazing but it was underneath the, the surface what's on that structure how are you really built that's the stuff that you have to ask God to deal with see in personal prayer you don't go in there trying to seek his hand you want to seek his face because if you seek his face he'll start telling you about your face he'll start telling you about your heart he'll start dealing with you about your soul that's the place you want to get into with your personal prayer build it up by being transparent going in there naked in the shame he don't need you to come in there and role play he's not looking for sally he's looking for you who are you will the real you stand up that's who he's looking for. You got to build yourself up by way of the word you got to learn how to worship you need to research scripture you got to learn how to give him thanksgiving, understanding supplication. Then you can move into intercession. Don't you dare try to stand in the gap for somebody and you got issues with God people. You move from prayer to intercession. You become a gap filler when he fills your gaps. If you are open for the devil to play around in your life, you stay out the gap until you get your gaps filled. Don't, be tr- don't try to become a gap filler. Stand in the gap, making up hedges and walls, and you are just as tormented, demonic, on hell's assignment, pushing his agenda, and you got all these gaping holes in your heart. Um, no, no, no. You stop. You don't be a gap filler. You wait until he finish dealing with you first because he's not going to hear you anyway. You're praying amiss. You got jealousy, strife, envy. You backbiting, a gossiper. Mm-mm. Too many. You're too open. Too many gaps. Let him fill in your gap before you try, start trying to fill in, fill in the gap for him. Because right now you'll be looking like hell and he don't need hell and hell. And then he's standing right there. No, you're supposed to be standing in the midst 
on behalf of a people, a place, or a global event. Ask God to start filling in your gaps. Your gaps. Ask him to deal with the surface, the corroded part of you, the hidden part of you, the mask part of you, the part that people don't see unless they discern it and unless he reveal it by way of his spirit. Ask him to deal with that part, the part that we like to hide that we don't want people to know about. That part of you, that's the part that you can deal with in personal prayer. It's a place of transparency. It's a place of exchange. It's a place where you come in there and you quiet your soul and you let him talk and tell you about yourself because you're not that wonderful at times. You can be nasty, snotty, just stink before God. Just nothing but flesh. And then, when you don't want to listen to him in prayer, guess what he'll start doing? Sending your spouse to tell you about yourself. And you'll be talking about that's the devil. Or your children. Or your leader. Or, you know, your co-workers. You know, your teacher start talking to you because you can't hear God. You know, just nasty. He'll start talking to your children. Then you'll be like, sit down. Didn't nobody tell you? Yeah, they'll start talking. God will start speaking through your, your, your children. Uh, he'll even start speaking through your enemy. Personal prayer. You build it up. You get there. You don't try to do anything outside of that place. You build yourself up in his word, in his presence. Not with your list. He don't need your laundry list. You, you can do that after you build a relationship with him. Get to know him. Get to Do you really know him? Do you really know him? Because when hell break out, do you really know him? Are you quick to cuss? Use profanity? Huh? Do you still? Let me tell you what God revealed to me the other day. So funny, but so true. I'm about to be very transparent. Thank you, Holy Ghost. When I first got saved, because I came from a fighting family, and I was in a gang, if you rubbed me the wrong way, said something that I didn't like, I came to the church in jogging pants and gym shoes. I came prepared to beat you physically. But God revealed to me that over the these uh, the year or so that I've been in conflict, I have not wanted to fight in my flesh. Isn't that something? That's a big win for me. I'm telling y'all. that. Listen, anybody that know me, do I look like I like to fight? I don't anymore. Only in the spirit. But I promise you, I used to come to the church and want to beat God's people down carnal, unconverted in my spirit, unconverted in my heart, unconverted in my mind. I just felt like you was the enemy. And when the Bible clearly says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places, I could never ever see what was motivating the person. I always looked at them versus the agenda of hell. So instead of me dealing with it in the spirit, I wanted to beat them down in the flesh. But it's a big win. I haven't had any problems like that since 2010. We winning. I'm winning. But do you have those kind of problems? When somebody rub you the wrong way, do you want to fight them? Yep. That's that flesh. Ask him to deal with that. Do you hear a cuss word? That's that flesh. Mm-hmm. Do you start backbiting and gossiping and start slandering their name because you want to try to defend yourself? Are you a defender? Are you a protector of yourself? Yeah, you don't know him yet. You don't know him yet. Are you a liar? Ha ha ha. He'll start dealing with it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And he's still dealing with some stuff in me. But I'm telling you. This is where you learn about you. In where? Where did I say? In the secret place. When was the last time you've been there? When was the last time you really, really started talking to him? All right. I'm going to give you some scriptures because I think I've done enough damage for today. Matthew 6 and 6. <laughs> I want you to read Genesis chapter 1. So you got Matthew 6 and 6, Genesis chapter 1, John chapter 10, 3 and 5. That's John chapter 10, 3 and 5. So Genesis 1, the whole chapter, Matthew 6. You might as well just read the whole chapter, but I gave you Matthew 6 and 6. Some of you haven't read your Bible in a while, so go ahead and just take that down. John chapter 10, 3 and 5, 3 through 5. John 10 and 14, 
1 John 5, 15 through 15. You want to read Isaiah 65 and 24. John 15 and 7. Here's my favorite. Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Because when I ask, I expect to receive. When I seek, I expect him to find him. And when I knock at the door, I expect for him to open. Yes, I do. But also read 7 as well when it says before you try to get the tree trunk out of somebody else's eye. I mean, the, the, the speck out of somebody else's eye. You better make sure that that tree trunk is not hanging out of yours. Hello. Hebrews 11 and 1. Hebrews 11 and 6. Then I want you to go and define God's character. You ready? That's the ethnos of God, okay? Ethos. That's talking about his morals, because he has them. Talks about his personality, his nature, his name, his spirit, his traits. Come on, y'all. His principles, his standards, his ethics. But you got to go study for yourself. And then we'll come back and we'll just talk about it probably tomorrow. Somebody asked me to teach on fasting, so I'll probably teach on fasting tomorrow, probably about 9 o'clock. How about that? Did you get anything out of this teaching on today? Yeah. Somebody please give her the scriptures again or do the replay. I'm sorry. Do the replay. Did you get anything? You got a whole lot? Amen. 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 It will make you go and think, right? Think about it. John 15 and 7 for the person who asked me. John 15 and 7. And I'll be nice. Okay? So we learned today that prayer is two-way communication. It's dialogue between you and God as covenant partners. God has an opinion about everything that we may face in this world, in our life, any global event. It's biblical principles for everything. Uh, we also talked about, we gave you Matthew 6 and 6. I told you to read Genesis 1, the whole chapter. John chapter 10, 3 and 5. John 10 and 14. Yes, there's a lot of scriptures, but... It's going to help you because the more scripture, the more power you have. 1 John 5, 15 and 15. Isaiah 65 and 24. I gave you John 15 and 7. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Hebrews 11 and 1. Hebrews 11 and 6. And then I told you to go study God's character. And I told you about his uh, personality, his nature, his temperament, his traits, spirit, his ethics, his morals. He also has feelings. So you want to study his feelings, but you can get a lot of his person in Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter one. So that is my teaching for today. Who is interested in me teaching on fasting probably tomorrow? Let me see your hands. Fasting. Because we talked about corporate prayer yesterday. Just building um, in a place of prayer. Hands. All right. All right. Let's talk about fasting tomorrow. We'll talk about the absolute. We'll talk about the partial. And we'll also talk about Daniel. I have done this teaching before. You also can go on YouTube as well. I have some teachings on YouTube. And if you go through the list on Periscope, some of those teachings are still there that you have access to under Keisha L. Cephas. Like I said, if this is your first time following me, you can uh, go back to the replay. And you can also share with all of your followers on Twitter as well as Facebook. Also, I am the author of... Pray that through, which actually some of my teachings are in this book, which is on Amazon. 
Um, no more hard copies. They are completely sold out, but you can type in Pray That Through and it'll come up or you can just type in my name, Keisha L. Cephas. Also, I talked about uh, I am the creator of the challenge, the Goodbye Challenge, that which deals with the soul. is a seven-day challenge. We have phase one and phase two at KeishaLCephas.com that you can also invest into yourself with. Also, for those of you who took the Crushing Mentorship Program, if you aren't here, type in Crushed. Uh, because a lot of us are still going through a crushing season or a crushing phase and that never ends it's just part of your basic Christianity with God he's always coming for something in us that does not look like him generational curses bloodline curses word curses even curses that we spoke over ourselves just stuff that is on us and in us that he deals with and so I do have the crushing mentorship program for intercessors you still have time to enroll it is a four-week program and it starts on monday march 27th It's for four weeks every monday from 8 p.m to 9 30 p.m and i teach you how to build up your personal prayer life how to thrive in a corporate prayer um, environment or in the midst of a corporate gathering i talk about fasting and prayer i talk about the spirit of rejection so i take you on a soul journey um, it is a conference call and it is me actually teaching for about an hour. And then I do uh, the live call where is that you can ask questions and I give you the answer. And I also assign homework assignments. One of them is called the Dear God Letter that you write to God and you begin to become very transparent. You think, oh, I'm it's like a journey, a journal, but actually he starts to reveal parts of your heart that is not healed, parts of your soul that is not delivered. And then he starts dealing with your fears and your intimidations and your insecurities. He go all the way back into your bloodline from the time that you were a child. And he began to even reveal things about yourself that you did not know. And so that is at KeishaLCephas.com. It is called the Crushing Mentorship Program. The early bird is still open until Sunday. So you still have time to join and enroll role and then I have the crushing of a prophetic vessel that's the one that I teach on getting language for your own season learning how to administrate your gift in the prophetic so I talk about the fivefold office the apostle the prophets the evangelist pastors and teachers I also talk about how to wear your own armor and be comfortable with the sound of your own voice so that way you're not being a clone trying to sound like somebody else and intrude in the office that you are not I talk about that every prophet is an intercessor but not every intercessor is a prophet but we all been called to prophesy according to first corinthians chapter 14 and 1 we are to covet it love it desire it and so you still have time to enroll in that program which starts on wednesday march 29th and that's from 8 p.m to 9 30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Even if it's a conflict with your schedule with those times because you're in a different nation or in a different city or state, you can still enroll because we do have what we call the replay and there's no expiration date and you also can download the MP3 and it is yours for a keep. So there, the early bird is open for both. Some people are taking both courses at the same time because they're on different days. You are welcome to join me. See me tomorrow. We are going to talk Talk about prayer and fasting and why do we fast we don't just fast for things a lot of people fast for things but the reason why we should be fasting is so that we can have a deeper encounter with God and experience with God you can also fast because you need to repent so it's a time of repentance um, you can fast because there's a global event but we should never ever be going into actually fasting asking God for a whole bunch of things because God knows what we are in need of you're basically when you're saying that you have to go in there and ask for all things or these different type of things what you're saying is God I don't believe you to be my provider I don't believe you to be my source I don't believe you to be the God that makes provision for me so when you go into fasting what it does is smokes out everything that's unlike God and he brings it up to surface and he delivers you in the midst of it so you can partner up with him and see with clarity it actually gives you vision when you go into a time of prayer and fasting it humbles you 
it makes you bow. It kills everything that is in that flesh. So that way you can be a glory, a glory carry, carrier or a carry of his glory is where he begins to speak to you in your entirety. And you can hear him with clarity and with simplicity because you don't have all that traffic going on in your mind and in your soul. So we can talk about that tomorrow. I don't mind. So visit my website, KeishaLCephas.com. Take care of you. I pray that you have sweet sleep. I pray that even on this scope that you were moved to conviction. If you're someone who is not drawn to prayer or you tend to draw back when you have seasons of hardship or seasons of conflict or seasons of the unknown, I pray that this scope will make you draw closer to him and not draw from him. He's that type of God. He desires that you come into his presence and everything that you're not, you can make an exchange and he'll become everything that you need to be. That's the kind of God we serve. Take care of you. God bless you until tomorrow night at 9 p.m. I'll see you then. Central Standard Time. Bye-bye.